Welcome everyone to a virtual Excel camp. This week is transition age and a plan for success is a plan for you. We are so glad to have you with us today. You can feel free to write in the chat where you're from and who you are. We'd love to say hello to you today. Again, I'm just gonna say welcome to the Virtual Excel Camp Transition Age this week. A plan for success is a plan for you. Hello, Utah, glad to have you with us today. We're gonna allow a minute to let everybody in. We are glad to have you with us. You can use your chat to tell us where you're from who you are, welcome Nebraska. Hello, Ontario, Canada, glad to have you with us. It is wonderful to have you with us today. You are at the Virtual Excel Camp Transition Age today. A plan for success is a plan for you. Welcome Connecticut, welcome Washington, glad to have you with us. I'm going to share with you who our instructors are today. Our instructors, uh, the first person is Joanne Chalam, an orientation and mobility instructor, and she's the president of InFocus Mobility and has been working with individuals with disabilities for over 30 years. She teaches younger and older individuals orientation and mobility. Joanne enjoys spending quality time with her grand dog, Cody. Hi, Joanne. Hello, everybody. Another instructor is Robin Keating Clark, teacher of students with visual impairments. She is the expanded core curriculum coordinator at the Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind and has been working with students with visual impairments for nearly two decades. She is enthusiastic and energetic about the expanded core curriculum. In her free time, she likes to spend time with her children. Hi, Robin. Hello, hello, hello. And we have a student intern today. Susan Drake is a student intern from Missouri State University, but she is also a special education teacher for seven years while she is completing her certificate as a teacher of the visually impaired at Missouri State University. She lives on a farm with her veterinarian husband, Randy, son, oh, I didn't ask for pronunciation, Renan? Renan. Renan, a herd of corgis, which are dogs if you don't know that, and cows, and say hi, Susan. Hello, everyone. And I am going to stop sharing and let your camp instructors take over. All right, so this is Robin speaking. We are so excited to have everybody. You have an option during my part of our training if you would like to turn your cameras on and join us, or if you want to participate just in the chat window or talking, you're more than welcome to. I just saw another participant from Stamford, Connecticut, and I know her. I'm so excited to see everybody. If you've never met me before, then you don't know that when you tell me where you're from, I usually have a comment about food related to where you are from. So I saw Camille from Nebraska, so we could talk about getting a Runza. I saw somebody from Chicago, and I had to tell you that I love White Castles. So I love to talk about food. So let's see, I see somebody new from San Diego, which I just love the ocean. And hello, Sarah from North Carolina. I always get excited to see friends from North Carolina. And Kyle from South Africa, holy Hannah banana. We could have a great conversation about food about South Africa. How fun is that? Okay, I gotta stay focused because now I'm just gonna start thinking about food the whole time. And then we are gonna start just getting hungry and I gotta keep us focused. So for our camp, we have three great teachers, as you just heard. You have myself, you have Joanne, and you have Susie. So we will always introduce ourselves, and we're all going to take turns while we teach. So this week, we're all about totally transition, and it's going to be the funnest way you've ever heard transition ever. So happy to have everybody here. So if you're in the chat window, make sure you've said hi. 
tell us maybe something. Hmm, let's see. Let's do the great chocolate or vanilla ice cream debate. So in the chat, go ahead and tell us, are you team vanilla? Are you team chocolate? Or could you be team swirl? Ooh, I want to see. What is everybody saying? Oh, I see some cho uh Oh, it looks like the chocolates are coming. I got to get in and say I'm on team vanilla all the way. Maybe team swirl. Maybe team swirl. Team Oreo, if that was really an option. Oh, look at this. Everybody is jumping in. Anna said team swirl. Woo -woo. I see vanilla coming through. All right. This is nice. I like what I'm seeing here. I like it. All right, the first part of our camp today is we're gonna talk about a plan. And so as I see everybody answering, I'll give you a hot second more, and then we're gonna get into talking about what a plan is. So you have 10 seconds more to enter in if you are team chocolate, team vanilla, or team swirl. 10 seconds more. Oh, we see another friend from Arkansas. Very nice. I went to graduate school at, at Euler, at UALR. All right, I see we've got some chocolate. Ooh, I don't know. Susie and Joanne, we've got quite a switch here. I'm not sure. It looks like a pretty good division uh, of everybody. All right, now, Let's put aside our, oh, wait a minute. I just saw Sarah say cookies and cream with her chocolate. And can I just say, there's my heartbeat. I just love cookies and cream with vanilla, with vanilla, team vanilla. All right. Okay, let's get started about talking about a plan. Now, let me ask a question. You can raise a hand and Leanne will let us know and you can voice your opinion or you can tell us in the chat window. I want you to give me your thoughts on when I say you have to have a plan. What does that even mean? What does it mean to have a plan? Or what is a plan? How about that one? I'm gonna put my question in the chat window. What is a plan? Who can tell me about that? So Noah said he'd like to tell you. All right. Noah? Hmm. Let's see if I unmuted myself sufficiently. You're with us, Noah. Okay, awesome. So um, at least in my mind, a plan is uh, a, first of all, uh, a goal of where you want to be. Ooh. And then, um, a set of steps, um, tangible uh, steps that you can take uh, to reach that particular uh, goal that you have set. Uh, that's what I see a plan to be. Oh, what a great answer. I love how you use tangible. So that word really helps us know it's something that we have to touch, do. I love what I'm seeing also in the chat window. I see a lot of people giving us good information. How Camille says it's a step-by-step -step procedure. Megan says it means when you have a plan for your future. Ooh, so she's already thinking about a transition plan. Darren chimed in that it's a goal. Ooh, I love this. Everybody is really coming together about what a plan is. I see step-by-step -step schedule again. A plan is something you want to accomplish. I see a plan is to get things organized. Yes, that is exactly the way we would describe a plan. And I'm just going to see, Liam, do I see two other people with a hand up? You do, and I will remind those people who are participating in that chat box, there's a little TO2, and if you switch it to all panelists and attendees, then everyone here is able to see what you write. That's really helpful. You don't have to, but it does help. Christian, can you answer and work with Robin? Can you hear me? We can hear you. You tell me now what you think a plan is. 
A plan is where you have to think of stuff and like organize stuff to do. Yes, thank you. That was such a great way of saying it, Christian. Yeah. Thank you. What do you think, Graham? Yes, perfect. Okay. All right. Ready for the next one? I'm ready. Micah. Hello, Micah. How are you? I'm good. Tell me, what do you think a plan is? A step-by-step -step process that you accomplish. Yes, I love how you said step-by-step -step process. Okay, Leanne, I know we have two other people that want to share. I'm going to say wait on that because we want to get on to some examples of plans. So one of the things that I am going to share, I'm going to put this in the chat window as well, is kind of a summary of what we just decided what a plan is. And it's important that we're all on the same page. So when I say plan, and then we say transition plan, everybody is speaking the same language. So I'm going to put this in the chat window, and I'm also going to read it. We know that a plan is a detailed proposal, a detailed proposal. And we'll get back to that detailed word in a second. A detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. The second part of what a plan is, it's an intention or a decision about what you are going to do. The third part is what everybody gave me. It's a step-by-step -step organization or this is how we're going to get it done. The last part that I wanted to share is about the verb plan. And it says decide on or arrange in advance. And since we're thinking about transition, that's gonna be an important part because when we have a transition plan, it is something that we are arranging for something to happen in the future. So gold stars to everybody. We nailed what a plan is. But now that we know what it is, what does it look like in real life? So what I need everybody to do now is give me some examples of plans because I'm thinking that there's more than one kind of plan out there. So let's start thinking, what are some examples of them? So go ahead and tell me in the chat if you want to um, raise your hand. So I already see Hannah's getting us off and running. She says it's a plan for where you want to go to college. So yeah, sometimes that's known as your college plan. All right, Leanne, who do we have with their hands up? Anton. Oh, hello, Anton. Hi, this is Anton's mom. Hello, Anton's mom. So I'm helping. Um, I, does anybody know how to disable the chat? Because we're hearing the presenter's voice, which is very helpful. And then there's an overlay of all the chat on top of that with voiceover. Oh, go ahead, Leanne. Do you want to tell her our... You're probably faster than me. <laughs> well, I was just going to say earbuds are also really helpful. Um, that's what a lot of our students are doing. So um, you know what? We can send you some private messages just to help you through with that. Um, but a lot of our students who are doing voiceover are using their earbuds uh, to help with different things. Okay, so they would still hear the chat and your voices at the same time, but they don't mind that? Yeah, oh, Paula's already here. Um, she says mute chat notifications. Oh, okay, all right, how do we do that? So um, I'm just going to quickly step over to another student really fast, but we're here in the background if you need us. So I love how everybody's also sharing plans of getting a job or going to college again. And can I just say, having a plan for getting a job is something we will keep with us for a really long time. Michaela shares a plan to help for her vision. Um, Micah shares a plan where you want to go for your senior year of high school. It could even be, what do you want to do in your senior year of high school? Um, I see Rachel says, in real life, a plan could be a plan for getting small things like your homework done or something big like to get a job. Ooh, I want everybody to remember, 
an important thing that Rachel brought up. She mentioned a small plan and a big plan. Sometimes that's known as a short-term plan or a long-term plan. Okay, so I'm seeing lots of people share great ideas for plans. Remember, plans can be something for something very important, like going to college. But like Hannah just wrote in the chat, sometimes it could just be a plan for your vacation. And what do you want to do? Um, has anybody ever heard of a workout plan before? Sometimes you need a workout plan, just how you want to exercise. You can make something called a dinner plan. That's AKA a menu. What I want you to know is plans aren't just something that you use for college. We use plans all over in our lives. Workouts, childcare. You know what, right now, can I be totally honest while my kids can't hear me? I have a plan to practice Mario Kart so that I can overtake them because I have been in 12th place for a month. So right now I have a plan for success to win at Mario Kart. So remember, plans can be big. Where are you going to college? Plans can be something daily. Here's how I'm going to exercise or get my homework done. Oh, Alexander, just regular Mario Kart. I'm totally basic. Plans can also be for food. Here's how I'm gonna eat for the week. This is my lunch plan. This is my dinner plan. Plans could be also how you want to accomplish a goal. I want to learn how to play Mario Kart better. I'm going to make a plan for something that I want to do. So what I want you to remember is that a plan can be big or little, short term or long term, which means immediate or in the future. A plan is usually specific and it has lots of details, and we'll hear about that later. And a plan helps you get success. That's what I really want you to remember. Oh, I love how Kristen mentioned something in the chat. She talked about changing her plans. So the last things I'm going to be talking about are the components of successful plans. What do you think are important parts that you need to have in a plan. What are important parts in a plan? Thank you, Kristen is a boy, in case I called you a girl. That's right, I, I just heard your voice too, so I knew that, I'm so sorry. Kristen the boy, Kristen the boy, I know it. Um, what are the important parts of a successful plan? Ooh, Noah, right away, he said set realistic goals. That's right, guys. If I want to be dominating in Mario Kart, I got to set a small plan to get me there, which means move from 12th place to fifth place, okay? Not, I'm just going to be perfect at it. Hannah says big things first. I might even say little things first so that you see successes that make something bigger. So I want to move from 12th place to ninth place in Mario Kart. Then from ninth place, to fifth place. I want to take baby steps to get me there. Sarah says setting goals, talking about short term and long term. Christian the boy says practice. Yes, these are very important parts of a plan. I'm going to share three important ones with you. The first one, a clear goal or a clear objective, right? Because if I don't even know what my plan is, how am I ever gonna get it? So I wanna have a nice, clear objective. Ooh, I love what I'm seeing in the chat window. Anna says, follow through. That's right, if I wanna be Mario Kart Dominator, I'm gonna have to practice at it. Paula reminds us to have clear steps with room for change, AKA flexibility. Michaela says having steps. That's important because you need to know how you're going to get there. Sounds like you guys know a lot about having good plans and this is gonna be important. All right, everybody, remember, a, a plan could be big or small, short-term or long-term. We use plans every day. We use them at work, we use them at school, we use them in our personal life. 
Maybe you even have a plan to ask somebody out on a date and you've got to set it up. You've got to get everything in motion. So if I want to get a cute boy to go on a date with me, how am I going to make that happen? Plans are everywhere in your life. And small plans can be just as important as big plans. People make plans for lots of reasons. And we've talked about lots of examples. The important parts about having a plan, short-term goals. I'm almost reading word for word from Alexander, who just put lots of great tips. Set short-term goals, have those steps, practice, stay committed. That's an important part because guess what, guys? Mistakes and failure are going to happen. So when you make a mistake or it's not working out, you just got to stick with it. Like I've been failing at Mario Kart for a month. I've been in 12th place. So you got to stay with it. I'm going to put something in your chat window. This is what we were talking about, the important points of a plan. And we need to remember this as we move into learning more about transition plans. We need to have those clear goals. They need to be simple. We can't have this overly complicated way of how I'm going to become Mario Kart champion. I got to have a nice, easy way. And they need to be flexible because maybe I'm not going to win Mario Kart with Mario. I'm going to have to use another character. So I'm going to need to be flexible about how I'm going to get there. All right. Tell me one more thing in the chat and then I'm going to toss it over to our next teacher. But what I want to know on your way out is what kinds of things do you think are important about having a personal plan? What things do you think are important for your personal plan? So in my personal plan, I got to have it laid out. I need to make sure I've got lots of steps so that I know how I'm going to get there. But what about some of you? What do you think are important parts for you? Because just because somebody else has a, a successful way doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody. All right. So Camille, hello, Camille, says setting goals are important and tracking her progress. Tracking. That makes you see that you all the things that you've accomplished. Sarah says she likes to know what's going on in her plans. Micah says having steps and having a process. Okay, I want everybody to be remembering all of these great tips because when you learn really how to make a successful transition plan, these are gonna be the important parts. Oh, Whitney, I love this point. She says, reward yourself even when it's a little goal, which means when I finally win a race at ninth place in Mario Kart, I'm celebrating with an Oreo. Yep, for sure. And Alexander, I love what you said. I believe that I have realistic goals and eventually will move towards larger accomplishments. These are great. Okay, everybody, keep your tips going. I'm going to turn it over to our next teacher, and then I'm going to be talking with you in the chat window, just like you've been seeing Susie talk with you in the chat window. I'm going to move over to the chat window, and we're going to turn it over for our next part about plans. All right. Thanks, Robin. So I'm going to talk about plans, but since we're already on the food track, I'm Are going you? to show I'm going to share my presentation. Now we're going to talk about something that we can all relate to a little bit. Give me one second. There we go. All right, we're back to food. And this is Joanne. It seems to be a running theme of food today. So a universal snack. How specific or general are you about your preferences? So it's all about you. So choices, how will you achieve a goal? Do you have specific or general ones? And it seems from the chat that you seem to have really specific goals. So how could that apply to food?
Whoops. Okay. Facebook. All right, we're having technical problems, so I might need some help from Leanne. Okay, do you want to stop sharing and I will share for you? Yes, please. I am a bit frozen. Okay. Nothing to do with a snack time, but I'm a bit frozen. So what we were talking about. I'll get it. Hang on a second. All right. There you go. All right. Thanks so much. We're going to move on to the next slide. So goals, are they general? Are they big picture? Are they vague? Are they specific? Are they attainable? How would you describe general goals? And how would you describe on the next page specific goals? You can tell us in the chat window if you want to give us some examples about some general goals. That would be a really good idea. Or you can give us some examples of a specific goal. Well, goals in general can be attainable, but it depends. And I'll show you shortly what I'm talking about. So let's look at specific goals on the next slide. If you can move that over for me, Leanne. All right, so they're well-defined, they're measurable, they're specific. They can be clear, they can be attainable, so they're both attainable, right? Now, what's the difference between the two of them, specific versus general goals? But if you can put in the chat room some ideas, the SMART method, good. And SMART method is an acronym. What are some other differences? And good, good comments. Um, general goals are very broad, very kind of big picture. General goals are things that you want to do specifically. Okay, specific, work as a cashier, okay. Question is where would you want to work as a cashier? So you could specifically think of what store you would want to work at a cashier. And let's take a look at the next slide. So here's some specific goals that I made up. By next Sunday, I would like to buy all the ingredients to make trail mix with chocolate, peanuts, sunflower seeds, and dried cranberries. By this time next year, I would like to finish second in my age group in the London Marathon. And here's one from Robin. John, I want to be in shape, specific. I want to be able to do five push-ups. It's a good goal. All right, so let's take a look at the next slide, please. So are these mixed up? You have to help me out here. I have under general, timeline, many details, specific items. Is anything here a little bit on the mixed up side? Help me out here. And let's look at specific. So are Rachel says backwards. Christian says they are black word backwards. Camille says yes, all of them should go to specific. Hmm. Perhaps. Let's see what specifics is. You might be onto something. No timeline, no details, action items. I think you might be onto something. Let's see if they're still mixed up on the next slide. Are they right this time? Timeline under general, no details, action items, specific, timeline, specific timeline, many details, and specific action items. Perfect, thanks so much, Kristen. All right, so let's take a look at what we could possibly do um, to mix all this up. So. Let's talk about a universal snack. So universal snack might be the same snack, but with different names. 
So what's a universal snack that might have a different name in different countries? Is it A, tractor trailer mix, B, trail mix, C, scoggin, or D, student oats? Which one sounds like it doesn't quite fit in there? Any guesses? Student oats, trail mix, scoggin. All right, what's one that trail mix? All right, I think we've got it. The only one that does not fit would be tractor trailer mix. That one's kind of a little bit funky. Scoggin actually is trail mix in Australia, just a little FYI. All right, so let's take a look at some other things that might not fit. All right, and it's also called schmuggle or student fodder if you go to Europe. So same thing, but different name. So what does trail mix have to do with all of this? Let's take a look on the next slide. It has to do with preferences. What do you like? What don't you like? What would you say? Never, I would never put that in my trail mix. So. What things, when you think of trail mix or scroggin, sorry, or all those different names? Well, everybody has their own preferences. Some people don't even like the idea of Trump. Hot peppers. Okay, won't put that in trail mix either. Yogurt covered raisins, all right? M&Ms, which by the way, just another FYI is popular in North America, but not everybody else puts chocolate in their trail mix. Any other ideas of things you would or would not put in your trail mix? Nuts, okay. Let's take a peek at some things. Raisins are known, okay, popcorn, anything too spicy. So let's think of what other people might put in their chocolate chips. Coconut, somebody thought of that. Let's see if it's on the next page. All right, so let's think about it. It could be tart, on preference. Spicy, someone said, no way. Sweet, definitely got a thumbs up. Crunchy, salty, or smooth. Banana chips, good one. So I listed some things, but you guys are coming up with some other ones that are really good. Take away anything that's sweet, okay. So here's another great debate. I have a picture here of roasted almonds sweet, which are chocolate-covered cranberries, and crunchy, which are just regular shelled peanuts. So the question is, could the almonds also fit into the sun, salty and crunchy as one, or would they be separate? Hmm. Same, okay. Same, all right, one. All right, so the great debate seems to be going that I could have taken away the peanuts and nobody would have wondered if they were there or not. Both, all right. So let's take a look at what I put on the next slide. So what type of ingredients? So this is a specific type of ingredient. Ingredients that are wet, like water or oil. Ingredients that are dry, like nuts or dried fruit. Or ingredients that you like, your preferences. So what type of ingredients are needed? Would it be A, ingredients that are wet like water or oil, ingredients that are dry like nuts, or dry fruit, or ingredients that are your favorites or your preferences? All right, I think we've got it. B and C are the winners. You don't necessarily want wet or watery things in your trail mix. Makes a little bit on the mushy side. So you nailed it, you got it. So let's take a look. I listed some ingredients, specific preferences, and you guys listed a bunch of them already. Nuts, granola, rye chips, that's a new one for me. Pretzels, baked soybeans, seeds, shredded coconut, ginger, crystallized, dried fruit, oats, chocolate, and shredded carrots. Yep, your preferences, you got it. So these are all these different options or preferences or interests that you could have in your trail mix. Let's take a look at what we're gonna do next, Leanne. Okay, so I had a little fun with this. So what type of equipment is needed? A tractor trailer, a spoon, or a bowl? 
So A, tractor trailer, B, spoon, cereal, okay, that's another ingredient, B, spoon, or C bowl, B and C, I think you've got it. I was having a little fun with the tractor trailer from the beginning. B, C, I know, I need to make them a little harder next time, you guys are too fast for me. All right, so. Where will you find your ingredients? In a pantry, A. On a laundry line, in a store. So A, pantry. B, laundry line. C, in a store. A and C, A and C, A and C. Seems to be uniform, A and C. So you got it. So what's next? How will you mix up your ingredients? By tossing them in the air. That would definitely make an impact. Don't know if it's the impact you're looking for. With a spoon and a blender. With a spoon. Okay, well, if you made it in a blender, it would be a different kind of trail mix. You got it. So what's next? And you notice there are a bunch of things that we had to do. So, in a bag and shake it up. That's another way of doing it. So, terrific tips to make trail mix. And think about it, it's kind of specific. Decide which pieces of equipment will be needed. Determine which ingredients will be in your trail mix. Locate the ingredients. Pour it in the bowl or a bag. Good point. Stir all your ingredients with a spoon or shake it up and enjoy your snack. Those are a lot of specific steps for making trail mix. You have to think through the process. So what's next? Let's look at our eventual goal or our general goal. Yes, steps do help us know what to do. Eventually, I will make trail mix with some stuff, put it together and then do something with it. Or specifically, by the end of the first week of July, I will locate all the ingredients to make trail mix with my favorite ingredients, mix them together in a jar or bowl or bag and share them with someone. A little bit more detailed. So, do you think, think you got this? Which is, there's a picture of Scrabble spelled out, you got this. So good job, you guys are quick. You got it right away, specific directions and specific goals. Well, Thanks so much for listening. I'm going to pass it on to Susan, who has some more stuff to add about transition, totally transition. Hey friends. I'm so glad to be with you today. We are going to talk about transition. And if you are in high school or are about to be in high school or have ever been in high school, you have talked about transition. Okay? And I'm hoping that you can tell me now in the chat window or raise your hand um, and give me a heads up about what transition is because it's been so long since I've been in high school, I may have forgotten. Tell me now. So you have Sonia um, who's will... raised their hand. Sonia? I think Sue froze. I think Susie froze. So um, we'll give her a hot second to come back. So let's go to somebody else who has their hand up and can tell us a little bit more about transition. So who's next, Leanne? Micah's next. Oh, hello, Micah. Hey. All right, Micah, tell us what it is. A transition is a change of what you've been doing normally. Okay, I love how you said that. It's kind of what you've been doing and then it's going to shift or change to that next phase. Thanks, Micah. Who else do we have that's got a hand up and can tell us about what transition is? Sarah. All right, Sarah, go ahead and unmute.
Cool. You can try holding down the space bar. Yep. We'll give her a, another second. Hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> we were just waiting for Sarah. To I don't know what you. happened. All of a sudden I quit right in the middle of me talking. Don't worry. We were right here. Keep going. We're, we're can you hear me? For the next one. We can hear you. Sarah lowered her hand, but Anton, can you tell us about transition? Yes, I'm here to talk about transition. Hey. Okay. Well, Anton, I just unmuted we him. him. Hand. Um, going from one thing to the other. Going from one thing to another. Thank yes, you, Anton. You're I right. I love how everybody sees that movement. I think Susie froze again, um, which is no worries. So let's get one. Oh, I see three more hands, Leanne. Oh, I don't okay. even know. Who can we pick? Everyone's got that change going down. So who can How tell us something new? Daya. 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 Did I say that right? Uh, Dia. Dia. Oh, okay. Oh, we were so close. Okay. Wait a minute. Not only do I want to learn how to say Dia's first name, I kind of want to take a shot at Dia's last name. Is it Chakra Bordy? Yes. Oh, winner, winner. Yes. Okay, Dia, tell us about what you think transition is. So transition is when you're, um, so in terms of school, if you're saying transition from say pre-K and kindergarten to grade school, this means that you are, you're, you're actually um, making yourself move to a whole different level of school Oh, yes, Dia, ding, ding, ding. I love how you thought about transition, not just in the high school sense, but that we have transitions all throughout our academic process from preschool to elementary, elementary to middle. So although we are gonna be focusing a lot on the high school plan, Dia, you hit the nail on the head with that transition is about going to a new phase of life. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Susie, whose computer and everything is up and running smooth. And now you're going to hear her voice next. Thanks, Dia, and everybody else. Got it. Hey, guys, I am so sorry. I don't know what happened, um, but I am so excited to talk about transition. And Dia, you are so right. We transition all the time in our lives. Um, we transition from preschool to kindergarten. We have a transition every summer um, from one grade to the next. So we're going to talk about right now, like Robin said, um, transitioning, you know, from high school onto whatever we're doing um, the next part of our life. Um, so many of you guys have talked about your transition plan, um, what you're going to do next. And I know that Joanne and Robin have really talked about, um, you're right, moving to, in the middle of this school year to a new school. That is a transition. But Robin and Joanne have talked about um, setting some goals. And that is a huge part of transition. So when you are, great question, Robin, who has read your transition plan? Tell us in the comment, in the chat. Um, so set a goal about what you wanna do after high school or um, even during high school. So if your goal is to graduate, if your goal is to take um, an extracurricular class, so that could all be part of your transition plan. The most important part probably is to do things that interest you. So you need to decide um, what interests you, um, where your interests lay. So one of the most important things for me was I really like to be outside. That's, I want to have a job that I can do that, that I can work with students um, and be able to be outside and do things like that. So when I'm thinking about transition, and going into high school and college, that's how I write my plan. So when you're writing your plan, you need to think about those things. So if you like computer games or working on the computer, maybe that's important for you, that you're able to write goals um, that are focused on working with the computer. Or if you're really into sports and things like that, that you're able to write goals that are really focused on being involved in athletics. Um, and that's how you write your transition plan. So you look at that big, really, really big general goal, like Julian talked about, and you say, okay, 
I really like being outside or I really like sports or I really enjoy the computer. And then you come up with some really specific goals to get you there. And that is what a transition plan is. Um, so if you're, um, and then your transition plan is broke up a little more than that, but that's how transition works. Um, and so your transition plan is really what gets you to be successful in your future. And Robin has a perfect def definition in our chat for exactly what it means. So like I said, it focuses on your specific interests, what you're good at and what the things that you need to work on. Um, so like, I know that I need to work on math. I'm not very good at it. I don't really like it. Um, and it's where I needed the most help in tutoring. So if that's some, a skill area that you know that you need to work on, we can write that into your transition plan um, and say, okay, that's it, an area that we need to take some extra classes in or things like that. Um, it also gives us an idea of, um, so like in my state, we have, we can say, okay. Oh, and Leanne added it too. Um, we can say, okay, the, you want to work on getting, um, working on skills in doing laundry or being able to cook for yourself on the stove. And we can work on those skills at school. So if you know that those are things you want to work on, um, you let us know. And it's really important that you're involved in that process. Um, and that's why we try to get you involved in high school. Um, so that's part of what we're going to talk about this week is making sure that these comments are going so fast. I can't keep up. Um, so it's really important that you are involved and you tell us what your needs are. So the things that you need in school that you want to do before during school, um, after you get out of high school, um, and where you want to be so that we can help you create a transition plan. And it's not for um, people like Joanne or me or Robin to write it for you. That's not our job. We work with you. As high school and transition age students, we sit down with you and we say, okay, let's look at this together Let's write these goals together and let's help you be successful. Um, and that's what a transition plan is, is we work on it together and then we review it every year. Um, and Robin's right, you can contact your teacher of the of visual impairments for a copy of your transition plan. Um, and Hannah, that's a great observation. Um, there's a program in Utah that you do transition things. Um, a lot of times you, for me, we do them in school too. So they'll be part of your education um, and not just in a special program. Oh, Alexander, I love that you're learning how to code on the computer and how to speak Japanese and you wanna work for a Japanese gaming company. That's fantastic. That's a long-term goal. So part of your transition plan would be to create some short-term goals to get you there, right? In case you needed to have a four-year degree or whatever it takes for coding and that, Sounds like it involves math, so that's obviously not something that I would be involved in or know much about. Um, so, good answer, Robin, because I would have no idea on that, <laughs> anything in another state. So, um, it is very important that you are very involved in your transition programming and what's going on in high school, and that's why um, we want you to come into your IEP meetings and to um, talk about what, what you are interested in because we wanna make sure that we have you ready to go when you walk off that stage for graduation um, and, and you leave us. Um, it's very important to us that you're prepared and that's what a transition plan is. It gets you prepared and it gets you out the door um, and it's, it's kind of like a, a big general goal with lots of specific goals to get you there. That's really what a transition plan is. So if you're like Alexander and you know you wanna work for a gaming company, your transition plan is going to be all the specific goals that you need to get, get you there. So um, that's what a transition plan um, is in the most general terms, okay? Um, and I think Robin and Joanne have done a fantastic job answering all of your questions in the chat. And it sounds like you guys have had 
a lot of questions because the chat has just blown up. So um, I want to make sure that I have, that they've had a chance to answer all of them because <laughs> you guys really have been very interested in that. Um, wow, that was fantastic. And yes, a VR, um, so a vocational rehabilitation consultant can help you transition as well. And so that, the way that works, and I don't know if it works different in other states, when you are getting ready to leave high school, we will send a consult to voc rehab, to vocational rehabilitation, and they will get involved in your process um, and getting you everything you need as you transition out of high school. And so that's how that works in Missouri. I don't know if it works the same way in other states. Tell me if I'm wrong. The main thing is um, a majority of people to get any information to another place, either if you're not 18 yet, your parent signs permission for that, or if you're 18, you sign permission for your information to go to voc rehab. And if there isn't somebody in your school or area to do it, you are able to send in your own application and make your own phone call to voc rehab. And Susie, I think since we brought up those two topics, I think it would be worth getting a feel for everybody because a lot of times everybody's always saying transition plan, transition plan, transition plan. But sometimes that just kind of sounds like wah, 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 wah in your ears. So I kind of want to know, and I was asking this question in the chat window, but let's take a poll if it's okay, Susie. Let's ask everybody, who here has seen their transition plan? Because really, that's the most important thing of totally transition today, was that you learned what a plan is and you start to know what your transition plan is. So Megan has seen hers. If you wanna raise your hand and tell us if you've seen your transition plan, go ahead. Camille has said she attends her IEP meetings every year. Yes. Okay, Noah, um, I, I think is that a hand up? If it is, go ahead and Leanne and let no, um, Noah chat with us. Um, actually, it is Micah. Oh, sorry. I don't know how I got to Noah, but Micah, we're happy to hear from you. And oh, there's Micah. And keep telling us in the chat window if you have seen your transition plan while we wait. Go ahead, Micah. Um, I have seen, I actually had my TVI um, read it to me. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that, Micah. Okay, so it uh, sounds like almost everybody here has seen their transition plan. So Joanne, Susie, and I are giving you big thumbs up about that. And I love how I've seen it now from Alexander, Camille, you are attending your IEP every year. That is so important because the IEP is about you. You don't want other people to make decisions mm -hmm. about your life. Okay, can we do a quick trivia question? All right, who here knows what VR stands for in VR counselor? Who can tell me, fastest fingers in the chat window, who can tell me what VR stands for? Oh, I haven't seen an answer yet. Oh, Hannah, fastest fingers. Hannah must be like locked on her keyboard. Okay, so Hannah's in, Camille is in. Anybody else know what that VR stands for? Perfect, Dia. Oh, Dia's got the whole thing, I love it, yes vocational rehabilitation. All right, this is your counselor who, it's kind of like a relay race and your teachers are running this leg with you, but when you get to move to adulthood, they're gonna pass that torch to somebody new who's going to support you. And that new person is your vocational rehabilitation counselor, better known as your VR counselor. Now, let me ask another question, if that's okay, Susie, really fast. You go right ahead. How many of you know who your VR counselor is? Because there are some critical people that you should know in your life. One, your teacher of students with vision impairments. Two, your parents. And three, 
your VR counselor. So Hannah knows her VR counselor. Megan knows her VR counselor. Oh, I love it. I see it coming through. If you don't know, you, we'll give you some ideas to help you out. Perfect. Oh, I love it. This is going to make Joanne smile. Hannah says the other person you should know. Oh, the same Joanne time says Joanne. too. Hannah is saying your O&M instructor. Yeah, these are critical people on your team. In fact, why don't we close out our discussion talking about the important people on your transition team? So we already know that your VR counselor is somebody important. Your TVI is another important person. Your O&M is another important person. Who else is an important person on your transition team? If you use your acronyms, you might need to spell them out because Paula, I'm guessing that DRS is Department of Rehabilitative Services. <laughs> um, who else should you have on your transition team? Can you have your favorite special ed teacher, Hannah? Are you in my brain? I just said that, yep. What about, wait a minute, what about a mentor? What about, can you have a mentor on your transition team? Can you have an older sibling on your transition team? Dia says a Braille teacher. Um, Mike is the team chair, maybe the special ed director. Ooh, a mentor. Remember, a transition team are all of the people who are gonna help you be successful with your plan. And I don't know if anybody caught this, but Joanne gave a great point in our chat. Transition is all about your preferences, your likes, your talents, and your interests. So you wanna have people on your team who know those things. What about an assistive technology specialist or somebody from AT? Does anybody think that, should be, that person should be on your transition team? Hmm. Okay, Camille is already in there agreeing. All right, Michaela thinks that she needs to have a licensed nursing assistant. Brenda says a school counselor. Yeah, what about your dog, Toby? Your dog, do you think that's the person you wanna have on it? Yeah, that's a no. Remember, you wanna surround yourself with people who will help you be successful for your next part. Joanne asked a great question in the chat that I want you guys to think about and our extension activities, please do them. It's not like doing homework, it's fun. We'll help you think about those things. How do you know your preferences? How do you know what you like and don't like? So think about the people who can help give that information to you. Your parents, <laughs> although I know it's so uncool to talk to your parents siblings, your mobility instructor. Those are all people who can help you recognize your preferences. Oh my goodness, Joanne and Susie, it is 1258 in Utah, 258 if you're on the East Coast, 158 if you're in California. And I don't even know what time it is in South Africa. I'm so sorry. But that means we are wrapping up with our transition day one. So your quick recap is plans can be used anywhere in your life, but the plan that we want to think about is your transition plan. We want to have some specific and some general parts in your transition plan. So you get to do our extension activities that will help you with developing your transition skills. Thank you so much. I don't want to speak for everybody, but I'm just going to give my thanks for being with us. What and is I'm tomorrow? Gonna, oh, well, that's what we're going to, I'm going to let somebody else announce Okay. That. I was going to ask for tomorrow. support to tomorrow. win tomorrow. Tomorrow, we've got something great. And Susie or Joanne, will you jump in and tell us how tomorrow is going to help us with our transition planning? So tomorrow, we are going to have some fantastic people to come talk to you about their transition and some goals that they set and how 
um, maybe they succeeded or had some struggles and how they um, worked to get through those struggles. They're going to be here tomorrow to talk to you and we are so excited. So part of your extension activity is to think of some questions, to ask them, be ready to go, be excited um, because they are fantastic and we can't wait to have them here tomorrow. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you, Joanne and Robin and Susan. This has been fantastic. Oh, thank you so much for having us, everybody. And if you can't make it for Canada Day, don't worry. We're <laughs> recording it. So happy Canadian Day to you. And know that we will be celebrating with four fabulous mentors. And I want to say to my Connecticut friends, Two of those mentors are graduates from Connecticut. So exciting. Thank you, everybody. Bye.